Hello, so since my last video, I've gotten a lot of questions about the SEL 810A. I'm going to go over the system, explain a little bit about its history and what it was used for. This machine was released in 1967. This particular one was installed in 1969 and was used along with, uh, I believe, 16 other similar machines or identical machines to control a gas pipeline. And specifically what this system did was it would control two jet engines uh, that you were used to pressurize the pipeline. So this first two sets of racks, one cabinet, what it does is it is like the monitor and keyboard kind of. Um, the system actually kind of had two monitors and keyboards. So this section would output numbers here. And here you could use to input numbers, okay? These are buttons, so you can see set point execute, for instance, here. And then you would set point, set point execute. And down here, these are all displays. So these display specific values that are pulled off of the relay IOs that I will show you in just a second. And then this would display memory, the state of memory. And that'll make a lot more sense when we look at the lights in a little bit. This is the system that is used to display the time from the digital clock. And I'll show you in just a second here. So, And then here we have the guide to the different function numbers. Okay. So that's our first cabinet. And like I said, that's used for displaying data and has some buttons that were relevant to the operation of the machine. This is our data control station cabinet, which is two racks, this is the first rack. And as you can see, we've got solid state IO. It's like IO closer to what we use nowadays. And this is relay logic. So those are input relays and output relays, which um, are used to control the lights and these can be used to control all kinds of things. And those are incandescent bulbs. So these are not, um, these are not uh, uh, driving LEDs, these are driving full-on light bulbs. So that's why they used relays there. A lot of those were used to talk to this. So that back panel back there, that's all wire wrap. So the computer we're about to look at, it is all wire wrap. And that was all done by hand right there. So pretty incredible. And that was to interface with a modem that used to be right here. And then we've got this digital clock. That's what drives that display. And the computer could also read the time from there. And then we've got more cards front and back here. And everything else down here is power distribution. You can see these are huge, huge power supplies and power distribution system here. Okay. And then finally we have the computer itself, the cell 810A. And this is a mini computer though in the documentation it is referred to as a mainframe. So you can see this is just the power supply for the computer itself here. Okay. Now what's interesting is that hours and tenths, that thing has rolled over a great number of times. Here is a diagram showing how the computer is wired. Okay. And as you can see, it was retired 2006, installed in 1969, so 37 years of operation. Here is our back plane. So this is the logic, and behind here is the core memory, which is really neat stuff. And you actually see we've got a, uh, we've got a thermostat in there to make sure we're within our operating range. All right, so one more shot of that real quick. 
and then we'll come around front and go ahead and run a program real quick. Still working on the system. Uh, so far, replaced, uh, replaced one card uh, in the back plane that we just looked at. So I'm going to go ahead and go down here and turn it on. So we've reached an interrupt. I'm going to clear it. Now the program I've got in here is just four instructions. So here we can see this front panel. It's got opcodes. These are the different things you can do with the system. And this tiny little program, load memory with zeros. So I'm running that program, which once again, just four instructions. And I'm loading it instead of that 034004, I'm loading it with 014004. So if we come right over here, we can see that an instruction beginning with 01 at the near the bottom, uh, second from the bottom in that uh, second column you see, 01-00 is LAA. That means to load into the T register the value stored at the address. Um, and then if we had a 03, we come over here at the bottom of this next to last column, we see 03-00 is store A, okay? So that would have written the zero, but instead we've made it so it will list, so it will do a loop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out here and uh, I've got my master clear I've set, which has set all of my registers to zero. And I'm going to go ahead and hit start. Okay, we got a little problem. This is actually a little bit more interesting. So what I'm gonna do when I have this problem is I'm gonna display what's in memory and see if it's the right thing. And this is obviously not the right thing. So I'm gonna store 0, 1, 4, 0, 0, 4. I'm gonna try entering that into memory and make sure it's saved. It did. So I'm going to step you see now I am at program counter one instead of program counter zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and display memory. And I have two and six stored in the last two octal numbers. So base eight is what I'm working in here. And I can see up here that is correct. So now I'm gonna check in the next memory location for three, three. In a step, and I'm going to display. And I've got 3 3, that's great. And my last memory location should be 110000. So I'm going to go ahead and step. I'm going to display 110000. So I'm going to go ahead and try doing my master clear, which will clear all of my registers and show that. Then I'm going to just make sure my program counter is set to zero. This, this uh, bit that appears to be stuck on is just a display error. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and try to start this again. Oh, there it goes. Okay, great. So what you see happening here is that I am moving up through the different addresses very, very quickly, which is why it's doing this. I'm running through my instructions that we went through up here. So those are exactly what's going through. And the way I can show you, see how the third number in each of those is zero? Okay, that's equivalent to this column here. It's actually the, the fourth number, sorry. So this is the fourth column. My first column is only one number here. So it can only be a zero or a one and I can see nothing is flashing in here. The only thing that's showing up is the contents of the B accumulator, which is iterating through each of the addresses, going all the way up. The reason my program counter doesn't do that is because my program is looping when I reach this fourth instruction at the third memory address, because we always start at zero, which is branch unconditional. 
Um, so that's going back to the beginning. So that's it. That's a quick overview of this uh, computer that I've been working on. It's now uh, running a program and I'll uh, keep working on it. Thank you for watching.